Welcome back to Close Up. For the first time in 12 years, New Hampshire's first congressional district will be represented by someone other than Carol Shea Porter or Frank Ginta. Another big winner from last week's election, Chris Pappas, congressman-elect in NH01. Chris, thanks for joining us. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me on. So Bedford, Goffstown, Merrimack, not exactly Democratic strongholds, but you won them. Uh, I know you won't share the secret to the chicken tenders, <laughs> but can you share the secret to what it is that makes Chris Pappas so popular among Republicans? Yeah, we were really working to build a, a broad-based coalition in this campaign, and I think the voters responded. You know, most voters in this district are independents, and that's why it's been such a swing seat over the last many years. So we were really going after, you know, those voters that vote based on the individuals and the issues and not the party. And there are a lot of them in the greater Manchester area, all across Rockingham County. And we were really successful in some parts of the district where a Democrat usually doesn't win. And I think it just shows that people are looking for checks and balances in Washington. Uh, they want someone who's going to be responsive to New Hampshire first and not to the, you know, political situation, which is just a zero-sum game too often. So we've got to work hard to continue to focus on what voters were looking for in this election. Uh, to make sure that uh, we raise those concerns in Washington, look for ways to work together to get the job done. I think that's the message that was sent by voters of New Hampshire this year. Do you think this was a referendum on President Trump? You know, I think there was um, you know, quite a few voters who came forward who were compelled to do so by what they saw the last couple of years. And I think it's really important that we work together on solutions, but that we also stand firm on what this state is all about and what our values are. Uh, we need to make sure that we are led with decency, with integrity. Uh, we bring people together around solutions. Uh, that hasn't happened too often over the last couple of years. And I think we can restore a functional democracy by having checks and balances and by having a democratic house. Normally, it's not too big of a deal if a president requests a cabinet member's resignation following a midterm election that doesn't go well for them. Uh, but in the case of Jeff Sessions, some people believe President Trump has crossed a line. Do you agree? I do, because I believe this puts us on the course toward a constitutional crisis. Um, he has tapped an individual who is not fit for this particular position, and he's going to be charged with overseeing the Mueller investigation after having made so many comments on the public record uh, about not believing in that investigation, uh, thinking that it's a witch hunt, and he's going to look for ways to undermine it. So I think we have to have integrity. We have to have the rule of law in this country. I don't believe we get it uh, with a pick like that. And that that's why it's important that we have a Congress that's willing to stand up to protect the independence and integrity of the Mueller investigation to make sure that they can put everything out on the table. And one of the comments uh, this uh, acting AG made was essentially hinting that, you know, one way to stymie the Mueller investigation would be to defund it. How will Congress know if that has happened? Well, we've got to make sure that the funding is there uh, for this investigation um, and for all the evidence that's been collected to date, um, that that's not compromised at all. So um, I think that we need to pass legislation that protects the investigation, make sure that, um, you know, the individual who's at the top of the Department of Justice now uh, can't fire Mueller or meddle with the investigation, that it can continue to go forward and reach its logical conclusion. If that is what happens, is, are we talking impeachable offense territory? No, I think we can't jump to that point. I think we Make, need to make sure that we have a full reckoning of everything that's transpired. Um, there have been a number of indictments, a number of guilty pleas. Um, let's see where this takes us. So you're going to be a freshman legislator on Capitol Hill. Um, are you going to be thinking about bills you want to file right away, or are there are some that you want to sign on to? Give us a sense. Well, absolutely. There are a number of things that we've got to focus on. Um, and there are issues that I talked about in this campaign. Uh, we need to continue to leverage resources over a sustained period of time to make sure that we continue to build out services here in New Hampshire to confront the opioid crisis. Uh, we need to make sure that we improve services at the Manchester VA, um, that we do better with respect to transportation infrastructure and the investments that we can make right here in New Hampshire. And we've got to move past the political divisiveness over the ACA and protect individuals with pre-existing conditions. So those are some of the early priorities. And I think we've got to change the way Washington works. And we can't do that if we have the campaign finance system that we do today, uh, if we don't reform the rules of the House so that there's a more democratic process. So I think Congress needs to start by reforming the way that it works, uh, by having a more fair and open process, and by working to push special interests and uh, corporate influence to the side as best we can. Have you reached out to any of these other youthful 
uh, congressmen-elect who've been elected around the country. Is that going to be a thing? Do you think we're going to see some of these younger elected officials gathering together in maybe their own caucus? Next week is new member orientation. So I'm going to be meeting a number of these new folks, a lot of non-traditional candidates that stepped up to run for Congress all across the country. So I'm really excited to be a part of a new generation of leaders that step forward at an important time in our nation's history. So I really look forward to connecting with them. I think um, people who won were individuals that understood the lay of the land in their districts and are going to be able to effectively give voice to the concerns of the people that they represent. And um, I think it's uh, going to be healthy for the system to sort of refresh how we can relate to one another and how we can focus on results. Will you be supporting Nancy Pelosi for speaker? Well, I said during the campaign that, you know, this is uh, a process that's going to unfold once the dust has settled from the election. Um, you know, there will be a race and, you know, no one has thrown their hats in at this point in time. Uh, the caucus will be at the end of November. Um, so I'm waiting and listening and really eager to talk with individuals that are going to be seeking that position um, to see what they're all about and how they can best help me uh, deliver for the people of New Hampshire. Yeah, I've been speaking of delivering, do you have any idea or sense yet of which committee on which you'll serve? There are a number that I'm interested in serving on, but as a freshman, sometimes you're limited in terms of where you might land. Um, transportation and infrastructure is a top concern of mine, and that's a committee where I'd like to serve. Um, I think we've seen Carol Shea Porter um, really make a difference for the district on armed services. Andy Custer's made a difference on veterans affairs and agriculture. I think small business is a place that's a good fit for me based on my background as a local business owner in Manchester. Um, so I think there are a number of ways that um, you know I could land on a committee that would help us right here in terms of how our economy functions and how we might be able to leverage some resources for New Hampshire. Um, so I'll explore those options and hopefully get some of my top picks. So um, obviously a lot of Democrats are going to start showing up here looking to run for president. They're going to want your support. Uh, I'm sure many of them called you probably on election night. In fact, uh, who among those national figures was the first one to make it into your cell phone? On, you on know, I had so many messages and honestly it took me a couple days to um, start to listen to them and really respond uh, to all the messages that I was getting. Um, you know, there were some 2020 candidates in the mix there. Uh, for me, uh, you know, in my position, I'm focused on getting the job job done. And to the extent that I can be a good ambassador for the New Hampshire primary, I'll look to do that. Um, I think ultimately the voters of this district should have the final say in terms of who the choices are on the Republican and Democratic side. Um, so, you know, I'll play host to some of these individuals as they come here and campaign. Um, but I want to let the voters ultimately have the final say. Right. I'm not trying to cause trouble for you here, but did Hillary Clinton, did Hillary Clinton call? I haven't heard from her since okay. the primary. All right. Maybe that's telling. You're a careful politician, yeah. but you also stick to your guns. Uh, Republicans really hammered you during this campaign for wearing that resist t-shirt at a gay pride parade. Uh, clearly that didn't hurt you too much in terms of that association with the quote unquote resistance to President Trump, but will we ever see you wearing that shirt again? I think I'll be wearing it at the next Portsmouth Pride celebration, which is where I wore it the last time because I was standing up to hatred and intolerance and looking for ways to support the LGBT community here in New Hampshire. So I think it's always a good uh, message to be sending about how we push back against uh, the forces that want to try to divide us and look for ways to bring us together. Did you ever feel that those attacks were crossing the line during the campaign? I did. I, I mean, I just thought they were missing the point about what the conversation really should have been about. Um, it, was, it was a total distraction from the issues that people were talking to me about, the opioid crisis or health care or a number of other concerns. Um, so I think that's where our focus should always be in campaigns. I'm really proud that we took the high road, that we stayed positive throughout this campaign, and I think that's what the voters deserve. And uh, your election, as has been noted quite a bit, is uh, certainly historic. Um, what do you think about when you think about this from the perspective of your younger self in particular, someone who was interested in public service and getting involved in politics, but maybe at that time felt that certain doors might have been closed to you based on your sexuality. Uh, now to achieve this, uh, to enter the, that door into the halls of Congress, uh, what does that mean to that young man who might have questioned whether or not that was possible? You know, I, I don't think I thought it would have been possible, and I never envisioned myself in a role like this. Uh, it's an incredible responsibility and opportunity. Um, I always knew that I wanted to have a place here in Manchester and in New Hampshire and look for ways to try to give back. Um, but, you know, when you grow up in the 80s and 90s, um, as someone who uh, is questioning their place in the community, um, you don't necessarily see this as a path forward for you to be able to pursue public service. Um, so I'm really happy that times have changed. And I think everyone deserves a seat at the table. And if this, this election at all sends that positive message, then I think we're all better off for it. And uh, 
don't want to put you on the spot here, but during the campaign, you did say when we brought this up that maybe there would be some Puritan ice cream uh, available at the congressional office. Do you think that you're going to see some of that coming down to Washington? You're going to have to have a little fridge there? Well, we spent a lot of time on this campaign working on ice cream logistics, <laughs> figuring out how to get the ice cream from Manchester up to Conway, over to Portsmouth, and all across the district. We figured it out, though. Um, but getting it down to D.C. is a totally different story. So I've seen members you know, from Atlanta that have a Coke fridge in their office. Um, maybe we can figure out a way to get an ice cream freezer right. there, but uh, you know, first things first. Congressman-elect Pappas, thank you for your time. We appreciate thank it. Thank you.